Status quo for 22, what's the, what's the situation on where we're going with power units? So, I mean, this is going to be something that's really interesting. So we've seen through 2021, Honda really have kind of closed that gap to Mercedes. Ferrari have recovered from 2020 and Renault are right there with their power units. So we've got a really tight cluster of power units finally in Formula One, all with a good level of reliability. So they're all now looking to the next thing. But... 2022, at the start of the year, there's a homologation date for their new engines. So they need, between now and that date, need to have their new engine prepared. And they can change as much as they want of the engine. If Ferrari or Renault want to go to a split turbo, if they want to go to Mercedes-style plenums, anything like that, they're allowed to do within the regulations. Uh, and that's not part of the budget. And cap. how long are these engine regulations existing? This is the for... problem. <clears throat> they need to homologate a new engine. So they're all going to be probably try to be quite aggressive because they're going to get locked in and that engine then will run to at least 2025 with the ability to make some limited changes to their engine for various reasons through that period. It could even extend now to 2026 as we understand. So you can see that this homologation date is that big line in the sand that each of the engine manufacturers is really going to have to be really careful of that they're getting the right package introduced. If they miss something on that package you can't introduce it. If they introduce something too soon and it's not ready, then they're gonna have reliability problems, which they will be able to resolve, but they're kind of locked into that design now. So yeah, there's quite a bit of jeopardy here. Then we go to 2025 or 2026 and ongoing discussions as to what will these future power units look like. And that really is completely open at the moment. There's lots of different people wanting different things, lots of people coming together in various meetings to get their points of view across. And what it may or may not be is well, it's just simply not decided yet. For more detail on what these 2025 power units might look like, Craig spoke to Richard Saxby, head of McLaren Applied Motorsport Accounts. Richard has just joined McLaren from Mercedes F1, where he headed up the test and development center. Formula One is moving forwards. Uh, we're looking towards a new power unit formula. As you say, we've had um, a hybrid system since 2009, 2025, 2026. They're looking to change the power unit and a bigger proportion of the car's performance will come from the electrification. Um, at the moment, it's what, 80, 20? Potentially it could go to 50-50 to horsepower, go way through the 1,000 horsepower. What kind of technology would be involved in doing that? And is that the direction that Formula One perhaps should be going? Yeah, I, I, I agree. I agree it should be the, the direction Formula One should be going. Um, I, I can quote, you know, Toto Wolff, who, who mentioned that, you know, Formula, own, Formula E won't, uh, won't take over Formula One. Um, uh, Formula One will become Formula E. So there's always this 50-50 Sort of, uh, sort of balance there, and I think that uh, Formula One, yes, would would be good to have a 50-50 balance initially, and not sort of jump straight into into electrification. Because I still think we've got a certain fan base out there who likes the noise and like the drama of Formula One, mm -hmm. and IC engines can can provide that, uh, and they can also provide the efficiency too. Um, efficiency is currently running about 50%, but that all depends on on how you manage your your uh, you know your your parameters. But uh, yeah, and I agree. I agree with that. I think 50-50 is a is a not too not too far away. Uh, one of the aspects of that would be potentially recovering energy from the, the front axle. So you would have a, yeah. a generator uh, connected to the front axle. That seems like a, a huge engineering challenge uh, for uh, either someone like McLaren Applied or the teams. Uh, what would be involved there? I think packaging challenge would be the, the biggest issue uh, that you've got there as well as well as safety. You know, you're, you're starting to now encroach into certain uh, zones that, uh, that you require to be, um, to be you know, safety uh, prevalent. And uh, there's a lot to, to discuss there, and there's a lot of discussion around packaging. Uh, the, you know, I think the front end of the cars will change, so there'll be an aerodynamic uh, change. They'll also need to be cooled somehow, um, and the car's weight would most likely increase too. So... Um, you know, there's a lot of engineering challenges there, mm. Lo lots of engineering challenges, but I, I don't think they wouldn't be overcome by, um, by Formula One teams. I think most Formula One teams would, would accept the challenge and uh, produce something pretty special. 
The other aspect of that is an, an increase in the performance of the MG UK. They're, they're talking figures of 375 kilowatts, which we've seen motors uh, already racing that size. But with the, the high cycle um, speeds of uh, Formula One charging and discharging between corners, what effect is that going to have on the battery in terms of size and technology and cooling? Yeah, I mean, right now, if we took today's technology, then, um, you know, that could, that could, uh, could be increased. But we've also looked at the, 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 the inverter technology that we're um, um, adapting or applying. Um, so, yeah, it, it, would be a, it would be a combination of the two. Um, but certainly the weight currently, if you to use the current technology, would, would increase, the, you know, increase the weight of the car. Um, but there'd be other aspects we'd need to look at the car as well. You know, some of the car would need to be strengthened um, to cope with some of the torque mm. that, uh, that may be applied. So therefore, you know, that adds, that adds significant weight too. Um, it's about coming together and, and, uh, and, and involving all the teams um, about uh, this balance of power and performance.